The Ukrainian air defense's daring tactics, honed over two years of planning, have dealt a significant blow to Russia's once dominant air force. According to the article in The Times, Soviet-era missiles were used during the ambushes. A senior Ukrainian military intelligence officer revealed details of the joint operation with the Air Force to journalists. Thus, in May 2022, Ukraine decided to restore the S-200 system and use it at the front. First, they found officers who had previously operated these anti-aircraft missile systems, and then engineers who could restore them. The first launch took place in the fall of 2023, but the missiles missed their target due to a change in the A-50's flight path. However, the military man says that the operation still had a positive effect. We set an example for the Air Force so that they would not be afraid of being fired upon. On the first try, when we launched two missiles, they saw how quickly we hid the launchers and evacuated. No one even noticed where we were. The Ukrainian officer said, Already this year, the Ukrainian Air Force took up the challenge using German Patriot batteries mounted on trucks. It was very risky because we had to drive the Patriot very close to the front. It's a radar, a launcher, a power source, a security vehicle. It's five or six big vehicles, said a lieutenant colonel of the Ukrainian Air Force. On January the 14th, a SAM battery was waiting for an A-50 crossing the Sea of Azov with the IL-22 Command Center aircraft. The Russian crews believed they were well beyond the reach of any land-based threat. They had less than two minutes before the missiles hit. The A-50 crashed into the sea and the IL-22 was damaged. After that, the Russian command moved the A-50s out of range of the Patriot, but they were still within range of the S-200s. On February the 23rd, a Ukrainian S-200 battery under the command of the GUR struck a second aircraft, which was about 170 kilometers from the front line. During another operation, Ukrainian forces managed to inflict further losses on the occupiers. The military used the S-300 system with the radar turned on as bait and lured the aircraft into the Patriot's zone of action. They happily flew out to destroy the S-300 and then the Patriot appeared. Of the six aircraft, two were shot down by the S-300 and four by the Patriot said an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. On April the 19th, the GUR used the S-200 to destroy a Russian Tu-22M3 strategic bomber that crashed over Stavropol Krai while on a mission to launch cruise missiles at Ukraine. Since then, they have changed the missile launch distance. We have pushed them away from some of the targets they could have attacked. The officer added, according to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, since the beginning of the full-scale war, the Russian army has lost 369 aircraft and 328 helicopters of various types. On January the 14th, Ukrainian defenders managed to shoot down an A-50 airborne, early warning and control aircraft, and on February the 23rd, a second A-50 airborne early warning and control system was destroyed. A loud scandal has rocked the state Duma of the Russian Federation, which is completely controlled by the Kremlin. Communist Party Deputy Renat Sulemanov spoke directly at the session about the armed forces of the Russian Federation turning into an army of criminals. Sulemanov was outraged that in Russia, in essence, a legal way of evading criminal liability has appeared, which criminals very actively use. The principle of the inevitability of punishment, which is fundamental in any legal state, has been destroyed. We are now turning our army into some kind of batko makno gang of criminals and outlaws. We are recruiting some marginal elements and trying to construct our armed forces from this, the Russian deputy openly declared. It should be noted that the Russian Federation began actively recruiting prisoners into its army back in the fall of 2022 when the failure of the Blitzkrieg in Ukraine became obvious and a lot of cannon fodder was needed to hold a broad front. The first to tour Russian prisons to recruit mercenaries was the leader of the Wagner PMC, Yevgeny Prigozhin. Over time, the Russian Ministry of Defense also took this up. 
The mass recruitment of prisoners not only increased the decomposition of the Russian army, but also had the most negative impact on security in the Russian Federation itself. Dangerous criminals were released early, which sharply exacerbated the crime situation in the country. Recently, a Russian prisoner has recorded a video message to Russians and told about his experience of participating in the war with Ukraine. He warns others against going to the front, saying that it is a one-way ticket. He signed a contract for one year, but it was a scam. The Russian army command leaves everyone at the front until the end of the war, sending former prisoners to a penal battalion. The mercenary admitted that he was trained to operate drones, but was sent to an infantry assault in Volchansk. He had no chance to use his knowledge since there were no drones. When we were in the basement, we thought it would be better if we served another 10 years just to get away from the complete hell, he admits. Don't go to the SVO. It's death without any meaning. In 20 years, no one will remember you, just as the victims of the war in Afghanistan have long been forgotten. No one can say why and for what people died in that war. The same will happen with this one. The channel's authors comment on the confession of the Russian soldier.